Scrolling through the job listings on a local website can be a tedious task. Searching and searching in this shitty job market is even harder when you live in a town of 5,000 people. I was commuting back and forth to college and was in desperate need for some money. I saw a listing that first struck me as an instant no. It was a job in a morgue. The thought of working around dead bodies just creeped me out to no end. However, I continued reading the job description and discovered the job had no interaction with any of the bodies, just basically boiled down to a custodian job. A job's a job, I thought. I called the next day and talked to who I believe was the owner. He insisted I come down that day and get to know the grounds of the area and just familiarize myself with the place. I was ready within the hour and drove down to the small establishment. Mark greeted me with a smile at the door and a firm handshake. You said your name was Jimmy, right? He asked me kindly. Yep, that's right, I told him. He showed me around the entire building and led me to the huge, pointless back lawn that he explained I would have to mow once a week. I didn't mind the idea of that at all. Finally, he finished the tour by entering the building. He gestured to the dim-lit room in the corner. I'm sure you can guess what that room is, he said. I could. I even think I could almost smell the bodies. Or maybe the formaldehyde. The first glance to the room was a chilling feeling. He walked to another small room and took his jingly keys off his hip. He cracked the door and began explaining that this was his office. I took a peek in and saw a desk, a big fan, some papers scattered about, and a mini fridge on his desk. Nothing really unusual. He closed the door shortly after, locking it behind him. He motioned around the small middle area of the building. The dirty plastic white tiles of the floor spoke of age and neglect. You'll have to mop this every night. No big deal. It's a pretty small area, he explained. He tapped his chin, thinking of other tasks. Take out the trash. Take in some shipments when they come in. Usually just boxes of formaldehyde or some new scalpels. Well, I think that's really about it. And any other little odd jobs that might pop up. He finished explaining. So, any questions? I couldn't think of anything, really. I just shook my head and expected him to carry on the tour. Alright, good, he said. Be here tomorrow around 5pm, and you'll work till around midnight or so. Sound good? Yes, sir, I told him. The next few nights of work went pretty simply. I would come in, straighten up any messes that occurred, mow the yard, and I usually ended up having about two hours to kill by the end of the night. I would just sit on my phone or watch the little TV he had in the small common area of the building. He never seemed to mind. Most of the time he would just stay in his office. He would come out when a new body came in. I remember the first time I saw one. Mark would come out and talk to the police usually. They would roll the body through and Mark would walk to the dim lit body room and shove them on a cart and slide them into the wall, disappearing. Most of the time, the next day a professional autopsy would be done, either by Mark or an outside doctor of some sort. I worked there for a few weeks and Mark seemed to be pretty friendly. He always would buy me lunch from the local barbecue shop down the road. One day he was discussing the disappointment he had that all the other workers before me had either quit or moved away. I could tell he almost sounded lonely, like he had absolutely no one in his life. I shared that lunch with him and I actually felt like we bonded. He was probably around 45, had some graying hair, but you could tell it used to be dark brown. His eyes truly held a sadness in them, even though his voice told a different story. Mark would usually clean his office and the body room around 8 o'clock. The room was small. It had ten racks where the dead bodies could be placed in and slid into the wall. He would mop the floor that normally wasn't that dirty. Sometimes he would clean the windows up to the room, and sometimes he wiped down the metal doors. But 90% of the time, he was in and out of there in less than five minutes. By nine or ten, he would usually leave for maybe 15 minutes. I think he had a drinking problem. 
He would come back smelling like whiskey and cigarettes. Like clockwork, at 11 p.m., he would walk to the corner store down the street and pick up some snacks. He would come back with four of everything. Four yogurts, four small bags of potato chips, four granola bars, four oranges or apples, and four bottles of water. Sometimes the items would change up. He would give me one of each and then go to his office and put the rest in the mini fridge. Mark always stayed overnight, so I imagine he'd get a lot hungrier than I did. One night, around 9 o'clock, Mark stormed from the body room in with a strange sense of anger. The door to the body room slammed so hard that it popped back open a little bit. I was in the middle of mopping the floor of the common room and I peeked into the small room. The floor was very dirty. I think Mark must have just dropped a bottle of formaldehyde. Glass scattered across the floor and the brown liquid was covered. I realized that's why Mark was pissed off and left. I figured I'd clean the room to attempt to impress my boss. I walked in and started mopping immediately. I picked around the shards of glass and threw them away. I was almost finished when I heard Mark enter the building. I looked up, waiting to see him. No one was there. I definitely just heard a noise. I kept my head propped, waiting to hear something. I heard a shuffle and I jumped like a frightened cat. The noise was coming from behind me. At least, I thought I heard a noise. I stood still in the room for the next five minutes and heard nothing. The room was still making my skin crawl though. It was so dim lit and dank. I left the room convinced I was just letting it psych me out. It was the first time I stepped foot in that place. I was watching TV in the small common room when Mark walked back in. The smell of liquor instantly struck my nose. He looked to me after he looked to the body room. Did you mop in there? He said flatly. Um, yeah, I responded. He said nothing but stared at me with his glossy, bloodshot eyes. Okay, he said walking into his office. The next day I suggested that I could clean the outside of the building with a hose. I wish I hadn't. The shit took me all day. It was driving me insane. He would come out every now and then to check how I was doing. It was hot as shit that day and I was sweating like crazy. You're like a little fireman, he said to me with a creepy smile. What the fuck, I thought to myself. That was the weirdest thing he had ever said to me. Ugh, I hate thinking about it. Right when he asked me that, I had rolled my ankle on the drain ditch that ran along the whole back of the building. Fuck, I screamed out. Mark came down to help me up and explained to me the last guy that worked there decided it would be a good idea to dig this ditch here since the rain was washing out all of the gardens. I nicknamed him the miner, he said with a laugh. I stood to my feet and finished the job. That night he had me do his snack run. I hated going into that store that late at night. It was just weird. I came back to the building quickly and noticed all the power was out. Even the street lights on the side of the road near the morgue. I stared at the ominous structure and slowly walked to the front door. Mark? I called in. There was no answer. I gulped and stood in fear. The power kicked back on and I saw there was nobody inside. The door to the body room was wide open. I slowly walked in and gazed into the room. I noticed something I didn't before. The two furthest body racks had padlocks on them. Chills ran through my body as I stood ice cold. The front door of the morgue burst open. Mark seemed surprised when he saw me standing in the room. He hastily went to the body room and closed the door. I was outside messing with the power box, the whole place just shut down out of nowhere, he explained. I looked to him skeptically. Okay, I said. He changed the subject quickly and explained that he needs to focus on some things in his office. He left me standing in the room, confused and by myself. I peeked into the body room. Everything seemed normal. 
The small corner security camera sat sentry, watching the scene below. Strange, I thought. Mark exited his office abruptly and asked me what I was doing. I turned around and said, Nothing. There was a moment of silence, and Mark had a keen look in his eye. Why is there a camera in there? I asked with a shaky voice. He lightened his tone and explained that a previous worker had knowledge and security and suggested that was the best place for a camera. It can see the whole room and enter the common area as well. My rent-a-cop worker, he laughed. He went back in his office, closing the door behind him. I didn't see him for the rest of the night. I knocked on his door at midnight and there was no response. I was just going to tell him goodbye. I walked out of the building to my car in the parking lot. Through the very dim lit office of Mark, I could see him peeking out through the blinds ever so slightly. I was beginning to become extremely paranoid. I took off from the parking lot and sped home. Halfway, I realized in my commotion that I had forgot my wallet and my phone from the employee locker. I slammed my hand on the wheel. Damn it. I don't want to go back. About 15 minutes later, I could see the morgue in the distance. There were no lights on. The street lights set black as the sky above it. I stopped in front of the morgue and peered into the black windows. Deep chills shot into my body. I couldn't even bring myself to step out of the car. I sped off. I'll get it tomorrow, I thought to myself. I walked in the next day at my normal time of 5 p.m. I didn't see Mark for the first hour. I assumed he was in his office. The grass was mowed, the floor was mopped, the garbage was taken out, and the windows were clean. I figured to kill some time, I could wash down the dirty lawnmower. It would only take maybe a half an hour. About 15 minutes in, Mark appeared out of nowhere. There's my firefighter, he yelled out excitedly. It creeped me out to no end. I looked up to him to acknowledge his presence. Yup, I said, ignoring any more conversation. I looked up again a few moments later, and like a ghost, he was gone. I didn't see him for the next few hours. I did as much straightening up in the facility as possible. I even wiped down all the chairs in the sitting room. I knocked on Mark's office door a few times, expecting him to answer. Nothing. I sat down and decided I would spend the rest of the night watching TV. A few moments later, Mark burst through the front door. He stumbled into the common room visibly drunk. Hey, Jimmy. His words slurred. He could barely keep his eyes open or his head in a straight line. I fumbled with his keys at his office door and finally unlocked it. He hastily pulled them out and swung the door shut behind. The keys slipped from his hand and fell to the floor. I heard his body slam to the ground through the wall. I sat slightly scared and dumbfounded at what I had just seen. I glanced to the keys on the ground and my thoughts raced. I waited about ten minutes and I walked to the office door. I knocked a few times very lightly, no response. I pounded the door hard three times. Nothing. I bent down and picked up the keys up off the ground, slowly. My curiosity was overwhelming. I walked to the body room and unlocked the small door. The chills enveloped my body the second I walked into the room. I looked to the corner camera and it gave me chills, knowing I could have been being watched. I walked to the two padlocked racks and fumbled through the keys, finding the right one. I twisted the key in and the padlock popped open. I recoiled in fear when I heard a desperate thrashing sound and a muffled scream. I stood to my feet, breathing extremely heavily. I looked out to the common room. Nothing had changed. Mark's office door was still closed. I gained courage and slowly rolled the body rack out. My stomach churned as I saw a young boy, maybe 18, dressed in dirty overalls and black stained boots. Wrapped around his head was a mining light that was turned on. His mouth was gagged with wads of cloth and tied around his face tightly. His entire body 
was tightly tied together with ropes, impairing his ability to move. His eyes spoke of fear and terror, but also a desperate call for help. I stumbled back, not knowing what to do. I had to open the other one. The key slid in quickly and popped the padlock off. The rack slid open quickly, and I was once again struck with an overwhelming sense of fear and danger. Maybe a 23-year-old guy it was, dressed in a clearly fake police uniform. Used condoms shared the same body holding cell. He looked to me and thrashed desperately, his eyes sharing the same view as the younger boy. I realized there was one more locked rack. I hastily opened it, expecting the same result this time. As I started to pull the rack out, I saw nothing inside. I continued pulling it out the rest of the way. At the very end of the body rack, laid a photograph. Of me. Washing the outside of the building. And a single fireman's helmet. I stepped back and puked all over the floor. I sprinted out of the building and screeched away in my car. I haven't even called the police yet. I just keep asking myself, am I going to be a worker that quit or one who moved away?